Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the Lord be with you this, the 13th Sunday after Holy Trinity. The order of service is Divine Service Setting 3, found on page 184. If you'll note, uh, in your bulletin, there's an insert for hymn number 972. Crystal made it aware to me. It's not in the hymnal. Uh, it is in the herb hymnal on the organ, but it's not, it, there's, they said not, not that one. So, uh, so there is an insert. It is from Lutheran Service Book, just didn't make it into the hymnal. Uh, so, mark that, uh, it is the first communion hymn for this morning. Uh, other than that, everything else is as printed in the bulletin, so we begin with our opening hymn, 553. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Do not forget the clamor of your foes. O God, why do you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion, where you have dwelled. Do not forget the life of the poor forever. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Do not forget the clamor of your foes. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. <coughs> Peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, have naked God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, Receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you have promised. Make us love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The Old Testament for the 13th Sunday after Holy Trinity is written in 2 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. The men of Israel took captive 200,000 of their relatives, women, sons, and daughters. They also took much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out to meet the army that came to Samaria and said to them, Behold, because the Lord, the God of our fathers, was angry with Judah, he gave them into your hand. But you have killed them in a rage that has reached up to heaven. And now you intend to subjugate the people of Judah and Jerusalem, male and female, as your slaves. Have you not sins of your own against the Lord your God? Now hear me, and send back the captives from your relatives whom you have taken, for the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Certain chiefs also of the men of Ephraim, Azariah the son of Jeho uh, Jehanan, Berechiah the son of Meshimeleth, Jehezekiah the son of Shalom, and Amasa the son of Hadlai, stood up against those who were coming from the war and said to them, You shall not bring the captives in here, for you propose to bring upon us guilt against the Lord in addition to our present sins and guilt. For our guilt is already great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the assembly. And the men who had been mentioned by name rose and took the captives, and with the spoil they clothed all who were na naked among them. They clothed them, gave them sandals, provided them with food and drink, and anointed them. And carrying all the feeble among them on donkeys, they brought them to their kinsfolk in Jericho, the city of palm trees, then they returned to Samaria. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You with your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. <laughs> the epistle is written in St. Paul's letter to the church in Galatia, the third chapter. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now, the, promise, the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God, so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise. But God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now, an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. We stand. 
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Turning to the disciples, Jesus said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But the lawyer, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound his wounds, poured on oil and wine, then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, keeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers. The lawyer said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The harder you try to keep the law of God, the more you will break it. It is inevitable. There is nothing you can do about it. Since the fateful bite of Adam and Eve, the law of God written on every man's heart was rendered impossible. From that moment on, the law makes everything astronomically worse for us all. Yet the sin of our first parents did not break the law, rendering it not good. No, the law is the perfect will and substance of God himself. No more did Adam's sin break the law than it broke God. It is not possible to do that. God is immutable, which means incapable of changing. Nothing affects him from without or from within. So the law written on our hearts never changes, which then means the reason the law makes things worse for us is sourced in what changed, us men. The problem of the law rests squarely and solely on our shoulders. The choice of Adam and Eve to transgress God's command irrevocably condemned us all to be slaves always breaking the law. From fashioning our gods from fig leaves to promptly escalating to taking life, a generation removed from the fallen feast, our hardened hearts become increasingly brittle. Sin attacks and chips away what is clear from God. Our hearts and the hearts of all men become so deplorable that all they think, say, and do is evil all the time. A flood is required to clean things up a bit. Eight souls start it all over. Yet those eight souls have the same problem as the billions who perished in the mighty waters. So again, hearts do nothing but sin. Eventually, God determined to no longer just write the law on men's hearts. It is still there, yes. But now it, is also, it has also been written by his own hand, by his own finger, on tablets of stone, not just once, but twice. God's law has also been divinely preserved and disseminated in Holy Scripture. Though men in their hearts continue as it was before the, fall, the flood, today the law cannot be completely destroyed. By God's providence, it is maintained and has its way with men. So today in our gospel lesson, Jesus exercises his divine prerogative in maintaining his will among men. He addresses what so many refuse to acknowledge and come to terms with. That is, the law is not given to us to make us righteous. That is, to make us right with God. Nor is it even, in the slightest way, given to make us better. You see, the law only kills. It only shows us the truth. The truth about God and the truth about us which is not very good. It shows us who God is, that he is the God of love, who for all men and their sake preserves for us what is good, right, and salutary. The law, the ten holy commandments, protect what is very good, that which was graciously given to man before the fall into sin. He gave, it, he gave us himself, his name, his word, and he establishes family, life, marriage, possessions, and a good name. He molded us in our hearts in his image and would have, been, and would have they been content and uh, would that they be content and satisfied entirely in him and what he has given and not given. That was the way it should have been. And that law was enough 
But now with sin, a reality, because of transgressions, the law shows us who we are not and who we are to be. For no one fears, loves, and trusts in God above all things. Instead, everyone supplants God and His will with their own. What is written on our hearts is real and it is scary, but unable to submit to it, we try to ignore it and audaciously attempt to replace it with our own rules. Everyone is just like the priest, the Levite, the scribes, the Pharisee, the lawyer who asked the question to begin with this morning. When we don't like what we know, we cover it up. We make it doable, at least that's what we think. And so we come up with our list of rules. 600 plus for the Pharisees. The priest and the Levite know that law. They know the rules. They know what needs to be done. Therefore, and therefore they believe they can do it. Coming up to a man that to their point of view would, could have been dead, they knew that if they were to start helping him and he was already dead or died while they cared for him, they would become unclean. The law was clear. But the law cited was not written by God. It was by men. And because it was written by men, what was written expressed the will of man, not God's. When the lawyer answers Jesus' question about the law and his reading of it, the lawyer answers correctly. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and and your neighbor as yourself. Or put more simply, love God and love your neighbor. Notice who is not covered by the law. The lawyer quickly realizes his answer and that it put him into a corner. So he asked a follow-up question. Who is my neighbor? He knew that if everyone is to be considered his neighbor, then he cannot get into heaven. But if there are exceptions, then things could be managed and, could, and he could eke in on a technicality. And Jesus, fully aware of this, of this man's tactics, tease him up and knocks him dead. The law is not for us to use as we wish. It is given to us for the sake of our relationship before God and our neighbor. Now, in today's culture, we do not understand the golden rule like it once was understood. Sadly, many are no longer even nominally acquainted with what the Bible teaches, what God's Word actually says, that it is a good word for us and all men. Instead, we live in a world where the law, love your neighbor as yourself, is interpreted as, I want to be left alone, so I will live and let live too. In other words, we live in a world that is motivated largely by selfish, self-serving, and self-centeredness. We think about ourselves and in love with ourselves, we change the rules. The love of God and neighbor as defined and protected by God's law is changed by us. Love is whatever as long as it keeps me, myself, and I out of the limelight and relatively unscathed. After Jesus finishes his parable and asks his incriminating question and the lawyer is forced to answer the man who had mercy, Jesus tells him and everyone, go and do likewise. The lawyer was to love his neighbor in place of himself. 
The man was to remove himself from the equation. Love, we must understand, is entirely and completely concerned with the benefit of the loved. Even if it means we lose everything to do so, even our own lives. This ultimate requirement of the law is why we do everything we can to make the law doable as we can. We don't want to sacrifice ourselves. We don't want to die to ourselves. We want it to be easy. We want to get something out of it in the end. It's about us, not the other. We want to put forth effort as long as we get some reward, some satisfaction. We won't do something for someone else if we may get hurt in one way or another and forbid it if that other person has hurt you or me in the past. Mercy and compassion. That is what Jesus tells the lawyer to have at the end of the day. Don't give what is deserved. Give what they don't deserve. That is, love everyone in place of yourself. But if there is one thing that has been made clear this morning, no one can truly do that. No one can truly love. No one can keep the law. No one can keep God's will. And so there is, as the law does, there is only one thing to be done. We all must drop dead. We must be beaten. We must be left in the ditch of death. Our sin, which we think is our homeboy and faithful friend, is nothing more than a backstabbing felon who assaults us on our way through life. We are found dead in our trespasses and sins, and the law and those who live by it have no time for us. They all pass by on the other side. There's only one Savior, the one who is free from the law, because he is without his own sin. The good Samaritan thinks of only the one before him. Dead or alive, he reaches out to care for the broken. He sacrifices his own cleanness. He pours oil and water on man's wounds and wraps them in swaddling cloths. He bears the nearly lifeless man up and puts him on his own beast of burden. He gives of his time and energy to bring him to an inn, to care for him. He pays for all this care, whatever the cost. Two days', is, two days wages are deposited, but more is promised. In the end, all will be paid in full. All for this man, this neighbor, this stranger. Now, at this point in the parable, Jesus adds a curious detail. The Samaritan departs. After providing two days' wages, he leaves, but promises to return to pay the remainder of the bill. We don't know exactly where the Samaritan goes, but knowing the rest of Jesus' story, the one telling the parable, well, that gives us a significant possibility. You see, the Samaritan is no mere man. Jesus is preaching about himself. He is the man who is concerned with his neighbor perfectly. He gives entirely of himself in divine compassion. And the greatest sacrifice and provision Jesus makes for the beaten dead man is to take the man's place in the ditch. Jesus, the good Samaritan, who has no sin of his own, who deserves no evil, no suffering, no pain, 
submits to the law and in love assumes the consequences for those who have in every way transgressed that law. He lays down his life for his neighbor. He loved him in place of himself. Two days was all that was needed because the third day he would return. The ultimate once and for all sacrifice of love made by Jesus would render the demands of the law fulfilled and paid in full. The promised offspring of Abraham would keep in every way the law broken, greatest of which was his shedding his blood for those who have not kept it. This he did because he loves God and he loves his neighbor. He loves you. This is what love truly is. It works in one direction, from the lover to the loved, from the cross to you. You are all loved by God. Jesus in love has given everything for you just as was promised in days of old. You have not earned it. No one has. It was accomplished as a promise. And it is a promise and inheritance that cannot be earned. It can only be received. And received when one who has promised it has died. So by faith we receive. We receive what was promised and what was done. Not by us. We haven't done anything except for sinning. No, by faith we receive what was promised and what was done, not by us, but for us by Jesus, our good Samaritan. He keeps the law for us. And with Him abiding in us, we now seek to be as He is. By the Spirit at work in us through the Word, we seek to keep the law. Not bound to it, but freed, forgiven of all its accusations. We are free to love. Love as the good and perfect will would have us. We are free to live it as the good and perfect will of God for us as we live in faith. Faith toward God and fervent love toward our neighbor. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen.
We rise for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we remember the family of Janice Hill, Jason Collins, a Special Olympics swim coach who fell asleep in the Lord this last week. We also keep in our prayers Jean Clanky, who is now at Newcastle undergoing uh, rehab following a long stay in the hospital. Also, we continue to pray for David Rathke and Cheryl Krieger and Marilyn Strader as they are undergo cancer treatment. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you served your people of old through, the, through priests and Levite, who of themselves could never heal the, cor- the curse of the law. Give us Christ Jesus, the true priest, who with his oil and wine is able fully to heal all wounds, forgive all sins, and bring us to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you gave the old covenant through angels to train Israel in your law. Bless the ministers of your new covenant to proclaim forgiveness, life, and salvation to all nations in the stead and by the command of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Righteous Lord, by our wickedness we merit only the evils that befall us. Nevertheless, cut short your wrath, make room for repentance, and forgive us for the sake of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O God, Father of us all, turn the hearts of Christian brother to brother, that those who fall into sin would be brought to repentance and not be rebuked beyond measure, but rather be restored to the communion of the faithful. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, preserve your gift of marriage against the ravages of sin, the schemes of the devil, and the raging of the world. Bless the couples and families of our congregation. Strengthen them in love and care for one another, and establish them on the foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord and King, you appoint our earthly rulers to urge the good and punish the wicked. Grant both justice and restraint and restraint in their punishments, that goodness and grace may be established in our land. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, wherever the wicked strip and wound, and wherever the devil seeks our fall, you meet us with healing and grace to endure. Soothe and lift up Jean Clanky, David Rathke, Shell Krieger, Marilyn Strader, and all that are in need. Carry them to f- find rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth and giver of life, we thank you for all the mercies you granted to our sister, Janice, during her earthly life, especially for calling her to faith in Jesus Christ. Comfort the survivors who mourn her death with the hope of the glorious resurrection and a joyful reunion in heaven. Keep us mindful that we are but mortal, so that we will ever be prepared to die in the faith and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, as Satan once overcame our first parents through the eating of the tree's fruit, so overcome him now among us by the fruit of your Son's cross, his very body and blood, given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Bless all who commune with repentance and faith, that in the comfort of the gospel they may be cleansed and prepared for eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and sound, you who tarry, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through who Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying, in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, throughout this life and the life to come. Through Father and God, peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. The man that's been pastor, he's, he does not look it. the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, but this life and a life to come. Be barred in God's peace, your sins are forgiven.
bless you and keep you in your baptismal gift. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Now that your body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, both this life and the life to come. Depart in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Allah, I do light in the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Amen. 
let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning. The Lord's blessings to you again this 13th Sunday after Holy Trinity. A couple announcements to bring to your attention. Before I forget, 
Our new secretary is here, so if Lorraine, if you would stand up. Uh, this is our new secretary, hopefully for a couple of years, we'll hope. Her uh, son, Andrew, or her son, oh my gosh. Her new husband, Andrew, uh, is a junior at CUW uh, in the pre-stem program, and your major is? Applied theology. So thanks be to God for that. I uh, checked in on his, uh, his Hebrew professor uh, the other day. I found his crucifix, or uh, his pectoral cross, and he, he spoke high, very highly of you. You're in Hebrew 1 and uh, Greek 5 or something like that? 4, four Greek 4. So, uh, so if you have any Greek or Hebrew questions, ask him, not me. Okay. He's much fresher in it than I am. Uh, so uh, we thank you. Uh, Lorraine is doing a, a, a good job here uh, learning the ropes from Jamie. Uh, and so if you have any questions with, for her, uh, you can now email uh, the church office without any uh, restrictions or hindrances. Uh, we have a new computer in the, co in the office, and so that seemed to be the problem. So we have a new computer. So if you have any questions, you send it to the office, and she will get it. And she will reply very promptly, too. Uh, even across the hall uh, when I email her. So, so it's great. Um, so please do that uh, and, and make yourself uh, 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 acquainted with uh, our new secretary. Uh, this week we begin our uh, catechetical season uh, with new, the Bible studies resuming. Uh, this Wednesday at 5.30 we begin Lutheran catechesis for the youth as well as the young at heart of the congregation. Uh, you don't need to be getting confirmed to be in the class. Uh, the dads will be in the class along with uh, about, I think, uh, five other kids. Uh, we have a large class. Hopefully by the end of that class, everybody gets their learn by heart done, and then we can have a confirmation. So it'll be great. Uh, but everybody is welcome to that class, 5.30, Wednesday night, uh, and then that will go to about 6.45 so that I have time to get in here for a divine service. So you can come to catechesis and then come to church uh, Wednesday night. And one thing about Wednesday nights that I, I want to, uh, it's not always, it's, actually the sermon is never the same, uh, regardless if it's the, the readings are the same. Uh, but uh, a lot of the Wednesday services, we, we celebrate the feast days that happen that week. So like last Wednesday, we celebrated the feast of the beheading of or the martyrdom of St. John the Baptist. And if it happens within the week, I usually move it to that Wednesday. So you get a, get a taste and a, a hearing of some of the text and hear uh, of, the, of the martyrs and the, the apostles and the, um, those of the faith who have gone before us uh, to strengthen us and to, to show us uh, how to live in faith toward God and fervent love toward our neighbor. So, uh, so if you come to class on Wednesday night, come to divine service and receive the sacrament again. You can never receive it too often. Uh, uh, school updates, we are in the middle of a purge, so if you did notice in the south parking lot, there is a big, big dumpster uh, that is going to be uh, for most of the stuff here at church that w no longer has a use or, or need, and so we're going to do that throughout the week, but also next Saturday-ish, there'll be some people here. If you want to help carry things out, please uh, make yourself available for that. Also, that dumpster is it's big, so it is available for anybody. Uh, if you are doing some fall cleaning um, of your own garage dumpster uh, or, or basement or whatever closet you have, uh, you can freely dump in there. So, so bring, it, bring your, your junk in and use that, because uh, I doubt that we'll be able to fill the whole thing. Yes, Julie. Right, yes, Julie or Judy Stewart. Oh, both and an I, which is nice. So, all right, sorry. <laughs> all right, I, I'm continuing on with the announcements. Um, uh, Thursday morning Bible study resumes with Acts, uh, with Acts 7, I believe. So we will uh, meet at 9 o'clock Thursday morning uh, for coffee and, and, and treats, and we will um, 
resume that study of the book of Acts. Sunday morning, next Sunday, uh, following the divine service, we will resume and finish up uh, Lutheran catechesis for the congregation. Uh, we're picking up with the Office of the Keys uh, in, the, uh, in, the large cate- or in the small catechism. I think that's about it. There's going to be a busy week it's, as we are starting. Uh, there's school meetings that take place. We have two this week, uh, Thursday and Tuesday. But uh, that's, uh, So be, be prepared to hear more information as we, we get things nailed down. Again, look at the calendar. Uh, we have that third week of September. Uh, are a bunch of uh, presentations on the school to the congregations. If you can't make it to the one that we are having here on that Thursday night, you are free to go to Fredonia or Pilgrim uh, to uh, sit in on their meeting to get the information. Uh, and those are, are, are printed uh, on the website, uh, but also if you want to, you can take mine. But uh, there should be a flyer or, or a poster with the dates available. That Saturday is also an open house here, uh, Broad Fry Ice Cream Social, uh, f- starting at four, 4 to 7. And so come during that time, there'll be presentation then, as well as a, a running uh, slideshow uh, in, in the classrooms. You'll also be able to take some guided tours, like to get a vision of what we are planning for the school. So um, are there any other announcements? Conrad, do you have anything? To, yeah, Diane. Oh, yeah. 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 The, the counter uh, to the entrance of the church between the office and the entrance, there's a sign up sheet. Also, I need to eat my words about saying that Solomon is going to be preaching here on the 24th. He is not. Unfortunately, he uh, has to be back in Denver. So he's going, coming here for the wedding, and then bright and early that Sunday morning, he's flying back to Denver and getting to, to church to help out with, I, I think he's preaching, so he's preaching there. So keep that in mind. So he won't be here that Sunday, unfortunately. But I did say he has an open invitation to preach anytime he's in town, so um, he is to let me know. Um, F- uh, he is at Wheat Ridge Lutheran Church in Wheat Ridge, Wheat Ridge. Uh, Pastor, um, why can't I think of his name? Uh, Lotzi, I think. No, that's not right. Yes, we will put it up. Yeah, Wheat Ridge. Uh, he did. He is stay. Yeah. So if you want to send him, send it. He's same apartment. He didn't move. Uh, in fact, actually, this apartment act is closer to the church that he's at now. So that's helpful. Uh, gas money is not going to be so bad. Um, and if you want to, his supervisor does a, quite a few videos on higher things, and I cannot remember his name right now. Uh, he's a couple of years behind me at the seminary, um, and it's escaping me right now. So, any other announcements? Seeing none, may God keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless.